One, two, three. Yes, it's the Late Late Breakfast Show with your host, Bernie J. Mitchell. Are you in? Are you in? Matthew, it's on now, so just go. So, so Matthew, what's the name of the company you work for? Free Agent. I've got to say, they are my favourite online cloud accounting system based in Edinburgh, <laughs> founded by an ex-RAF pilot. That's right, yeah, that's it's, right. It's, it's amazing. So, um, there's so many things we can talk about, and around business, of course, your, your, your long and checkered history of uh, running your own business, working for Business Link and then PayPal, but what, what, what's, your, what's your little... Buzz thing at the moment. What, 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 what's the message you're trying to get across to? Uh... So, um, well, interestingly, as you said, I've worked in lots of different industries, worked in retail, um, in engineering, all sorts of things. Um, I guess at the moment, uh, because obviously I'm working in the kind of tech industry, as we like to call it, and ever since I, uh, ever since I was a business advisor, things have been changing massively, especially over the last two years with accessibility to start businesses, run them from home and get quite, you know, get quite a lot of coverage and get quite big quite quickly. But um, businesses are still the same. Uh, the, the, the sort of technical side of things might be changing and it might be a lot easier. I mean, we're doing this podcast now on, on a very interesting it's piece of equipment. Wireless. It's brilliant. But, you know, you didn't have these sort of things a couple of years ago. Well, you did, but you couldn't afford them. Right. And it's that accessibility is brilliant. But I think we, we talk quite regularly about change and the way that, that you know, the technical um, capabilities are changing the way we work. However, businesses fundamentally are still exactly the same underneath. And that's where people seem to be losing their way a bit. What, what, what's the element that makes them the, the same? So if you think about it, um, we have lots of different ways of going to market now. Um, a lot of people are able to uh, put out their products. So, say they're selling products, they can sell them abroad, they can sell them in all different marketplaces in one one hit. You know, all the new kind of e-commerce sites are coming out where you can sell on Facebook and all kinds of things. But if you think about it, whatever type of business you are, whether you're a retail, whether you're kind of you know a project-based company, at the end of the day. It's all about making money. Whether you're making money to be a billionaire or just to survive is, you know, just to neither, neither, here, <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> but you have, to, you have to be able to invoice customers. You have to be able to take the money. You have to understand what your business is doing financially. And you have to be able to pay the taxes that you need to pay and, and get the money off your customers. And it's not that's still exactly the same the way where I always explain it is you have to have a viable business and it's not about business models you know people say oh, I've got this brilliant business model it works for these companies I've re- researched it but actually you can have a model in place and not run it properly and not work to the model and not collect money and that's one of the biggest killers of businesses Forgetting to get, forget, is it forgetting to get paid or is it forgetting to run something that's profitable? It's, um, well, it's every stage actually, Burley. It's first, you do, you do, you do some work for somebody. I mean, I had it the other week. There's a guy that um, did some work for me at home and he has, still hasn't invoiced me, right? And I keep saying to him, invoice me and then I'll get it sorted out. But businesses, some people who run businesses don't invoice um, in a consistent manner, okay? So they, so they do a job and then they'll go, oh, so much of a hassle doing the financial side of it, I'll invoice at the end of the month. Yeah. And if you have people who don't pay you properly, which is another issue that people have chasing money, I don't know if it's the British thing about us or what, but you know, people are terrible at chasing up people who owe them money. Uh, and add that to invoicing too late, you can end up with, um, if you're, most people will say, you know, my standard terms are 30 days. And most people, if you look at it, are actually not getting paid uh, if if they're lucky on 60 days. And normally it's a lot longer than that. And that kills you. Well, my standard terms are 24 hours. <laughs> well, there you go. How, but how many people pay you in 24 hours? <laughs> oh, the tape's broken, man. So, so, the, um, so there's, we were talking about um, Liam's letter to a young social entrepreneur and, and one of the yeah. things that caught my attention about that is how many people get really excited about particularly in this sort of sharing economy social space that so run around speaking at gigs and yep. blogging and tweeting or I do anything like that but <laughs> they, they kind of get involved in all the nice fluffy side and they forget the, the, the core 
don't know what that sign is. <laughs> they forget the core core structure and foundation of their business. Yeah, yeah, and 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 this is because. Um, I don't know, I suppose it's like anything. You, you think of youngsters who have uh, 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 cars, right? Yeah. And they, you know, uh, and it always makes me laugh. You see like a big souped up um, Fiesta. Fox and Rover. Yeah. But they've got this little tiny engine under the bonnet, right? <laughs> that they kind of don't look at it. They, they clean the car to its death and, you know, kind of have chrome pipes and all sorts of stuff all over it. But underneath, they haven't done anything to the car. So when they pull up a, a long light, a alongside you at the lights, you know, they struggle to, to beat you. But it's the same with businesses. People kind of spend a lot of time on the window dressing of a business. And like you said, especially when people go and talk, I, I've met a lot of people on the kind of circuit, not that I'm on the circuit, Bernie, but I do get asked to talk a lot of, uh, you know... High-end gigs. Gigs, yes, that's right. Uh, I just have to convert to get paid for them. But anyway, um, but, you know, you have lots of these kind of people who purport to be experts and stuff, but actually they spend a lot of time, you know, talking about it and the business underneath is is, is neglected because it's... Let's be honest, it's the boring part of it. It's the day-to-day keeping the kind of... Yeah, even if you keep the minimum amount of paperwork, the minimum amount of kind of um, procedure in the business, even that can be quite boring. So we're we're just going to like the um, for you, you know, the the lean startup, you minimum viable product because that's that's something I've learned about over the past couple of years. Is there's there's so many things I would never have done. Like I, you know, I I put less into a website now. It's really easy to get tied up in the beauty beautification of your website and yep. never have anything happening and and just it's, it's how little you need to start a business and i think there's a lot of opportunity there yeah well yeah and this comes funny interestingly enough this is actually more about on the sales side of things yep. because my background is is sales myself and and i can't believe i'm admitting this on tape bernie but i even have it now i'm working with a free agent is that there's lots of really interesting opportunities that come up and you talk to people or you or if it's if it's a business that's sort of looking for new sales routes and channels you know you sort of think oh this is really really interesting route you kind of do a lot of work around you know meeting the people the right people and and sort of putting your name out there but what the, it's the conversion part that lots of people struggle with because when you when you talk in a sales um, from a sales angle you talk about conversion and uh, if you ever have you ever been well then. have you ever been to a sales kind of um, uh, uh, training session yeah, I've, you know I've, I've, I've. <laughs> so you know the thing about you know ABC ask, yeah and then close the sale close the sale but it's true it's not quite so direct as that but too many, too many times there's, especially if there's lots of opportunities people think oh, this, and they get really um, sort of sidelined by chasing after opportunities and not closing for want of a better word those opportunities I do it myself I'm terrible <laughs> well. I do I do I use um, I mean, Nimble my favourite CRM system in the world but um you know, when, when I actually started tracking like who is really likely to give me money yep. from the 150 people I know there was like two yeah you know and, and it's yeah see that see how it went all awkward there it, no no, uh, no exactly yeah do I need some money <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no but it's it's um See, if you in in simple terms, if you're selling products, it's a lot easier to spot that because, it, it, again, I've worked when I was at Business Link with a lot of product based companies, and it's very easy to look and say, um, firstly, am I selling these widgets, right? And they're not selling very well because you know at the end of the year you've got all this stock when you do a stock take. Also, because you're selling product lines, you can easily say, ah, uh, this product line I'm only making this percentage on. When you're working in the service industry, or if you're if you're working as a lot of people are now, you know, selling their their knowledge or selling selling a service, it's a lot more difficult to know whether you're making a profit or whether you're actually doing well with what you're selling. And and as you said yourself you know it's it's the customers it, it turns more to customers rather than the kind of product or service um because you can do a lot of work it, it's a simple thing saying here's a product pay for it to saying oh well, i'll do a bit of background work for you or i'll get known and i'll do you you know i'll do you sort of a a, a sample of what of my kind of um, presentation work or something like that and then you end up doing the work <laughs> accidentally well so what's with them um, you know we talked about this before we came live on air but how how long do you you're not allowed to say it depends <laughs> okay how long you know, so you have your, um, your your startup my my super startup and when, when do you know when to quit or when to 
a lot, a lot how, of people, how long you should give it. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't know when to quit because when you set up a business or when you're kind of looking to grow a business, a lot, a lot of people will set a business up and just kind of run it alongside something else they're doing. And that can go on for a, a, many years. What you have to be careful of is saying, when I set this business up, you have to set the time scale then. Yeah. So you need to say it's all based on really how much money I've got to support it, how long I can last without money, because it does come down to that in the end. It, that's the problem with people running things alongside their existing business. Um, you know, if they're working for a bigger company or something like that, you can go for quite a long time saying, oh, this is a nice bit of supplementary income. And we all get to that stage. I did it myself with my business where you have to jump. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of the way that you can set a business up now, people jump a lot quicker. But that also means that then you don't have the money behind you to kind of dig in and grow the business. So in answer to your question, I've come a bit of a long way about no, that's it. Good, that's, good you, that's what you need to understand. You need to set yourself a goal saying either you have a target of a year to get to a certain turnover or you have a target of a year with this many funds. Um, so say you need a thousand pounds a month just to pay all your bills um, and, and your mortgage and everything else, which would be nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Childcare, yeah, yeah, like yeah exactly. Your, your <laughs> and- but if you know that, you can say after a year, then you have to face the stark reality of you're you're out of a budget. So really, I guess it, it's the old fashioned thing of budgeting. Um, the problem is a lot of people don't know when to to quit because they have this really brilliant idea and they have a real belief in it, but either other people don't or they just haven't really put enough resource to, to get it off the ground and to, to grow it properly. Now, I'll ask the same question with um, Lisa Kansky is that, you know, what, what if you end up, you think, you know, I think I'm supposed to be selling phones yep. and I'm really attached to the idea of selling phones but really I should be selling TVs or, yep. you know, if, you, if you're going down, if you've kind of got like the right energy but you're going down the wrong road, yep. um, <laughs> what do you do then? So that is, that's all about being aware of the market yeah. uh, that you're in. Um, I mean, there's plenty of businesses. So, so that Actually, again, can, I, can I give you an example? Because yeah, I, yeah. I, to her, like, I was, um, I thought I was an entrepreneur, but really I'm, I'm definitely, definitely not an entrepreneur because I haven't got that. Yeah. But I'm really good at freelancing and jumping yep. between things, but I spent uh, too much time yep. trying to be, um, the next Richard Branson and, you know, just you got the hair. beard. You've yeah. Got the... Just hair, hair alone is an issue. <laughs> so, so, you know, when, when, when do you, in your experience of all the people you work with. Yeah. So the the sad truth is a lot of people don't. So they'll stick to one plan. The, uh, part of the problem with that is that when people set a business up, it's pretty much the only time they ever write a business plan. Yeah. <laughs> because they need to, you know, um, they'll, they'll need to get financing or they need to, to run from there. What they don't do is to build in contingency of, of just going with the flow a bit. We, we, we were talking about this earlier, actually, Bernie, where people kind of, you know, they they have a, a set marketing plan or they have a kind of very rigid way of going to market. <clears throat> and if you spot that things are, you know, direction is changing, it's very hard if you're really rigid on what you're doing to sort of go, actually, maybe we need to start looking around this side. And it comes back again to what I was saying about if you have products and you know that, you know, three products are selling better than others, you can more, much more quickly, um, you know, stock up on those ones that are selling and run down the stock of the old stuff and have a sale. You can't do that so so easily when you're running a when you're providing a service, and you you've probably found it, Bernie. You kind of you know you start to get committed into all these things that don't make you the money, maybe, yeah. um, and and you maybe, know maybe definitely, <laughs> and you know that these other things are the ones that that are going to do it, um, and it's quite difficult to change direction. So how, how do people? I mean, I don't know how I've learned to do that, mm. but how do how do people? When you, when you used to work for Business Link or, you know, yeah. like bumping into people now at Fridge and, you know, how many people actually have a system in place where they go, this is, um, you know, like a, I don't know, a piece of software or a book yeah. or something like that where they go, like, I'm, I'm, this is what's working and this is what's not working? The, um, a lot of people don't. That is one of the big issues. Um, we all know, I always say this is going to sound terrible. It's always a bit like being in a, in a bad relationship. Yeah. You kind of, it takes a long time to get out of it for a lot of people, right? You know that it's not working and it's we're, going we're very happy married, aren't we? <laughs> yes, very of course. Of course. No, 
but you know everyone's been there and and it's very you know even when you're in it it's easy from outside so being a business advisor as I used to be uh, it was always a weird situation because it's almost like saying can you not see this Um, and it's much easier to see it from outside however when you're in it um, and I'm talking about business here um, you know it's it's hard to realize what's happening you kind of know that it's not working um, and, and what normally drives people is coming to a point where they have to either make a decision to drop out and get a, you know, a, a normal job again, um, or whether they say, I really don't want to go back to what I was doing. I, I need to change direction. So most people actually are forced into, a, into a, making a decision. A lot of people don't see it coming and then and sort of adjust accordingly. So we can leave around here. There's, um, it seems like being a startup is, is, is more in vogue than ever. And, yep. and I mean, lots of... Um, you know, hi, I'm a startup. You know, I've got a startup, and, and actually, oh my god, you know, because I'm a tech. I mean, tech sharing economy startups with um, who are about to pivot and are pre-revenue. You know, yeah. What, what they do? They need to just start a business, or do they need to start a startup? Well, that question to number one. God, or, or, or maybe when when does a startup? Because there was someone that we both know. Yeah. The other day who said, oh, we're a startup too. And I'm like, no, you're not. You've been, going, you've been in business four years and I know you were funded. <laughs> but, you know, when does the startup... I suppose my question is, when does the startup stop being a startup and start being in business? Well, and that's a million-dollar question because, um, I mean, we could you could even technically say that someone like ourselves, like Free Agent, are really still in the startup phase, in all seriousness. Startup is really... Um, startup's really getting the business established and still trying to find um still trying to find a way to kind of um to 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 have a a solid non-shifting business model because actually this the startup phase funnily enough is what you exactly what you were probably alluding to earlier is being very fluid and kind of looking at the way that you can change things and kind of grow into your business model or to your kind of plan that you want to do um so startups, I mean, me personally, I would call I call startups anything up to four or five years old easily. Mm-hmm. It's um, and and that, that, that crushes on half of my <laughs> half the abuse I throw around if you, if you say that. <laughs> well, the trouble is, it's a bit like the use of the word entrepreneur nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, anyone who starts a business is known as entrepreneur now, and, and they're not necessarily. Um, and startups, when you say startup, you do think of someone who's literally, you know, at the stage of going right. What am I going to sell? I found it myself. I've been at this um, startup business show um, for the gosh for the last ten years or so in various ways. But you know the interesting thing is, up till a couple, uh, up till probably even last year, you know the startups were people who'd come to you and say, "Oh yeah, I'm starting a business," and you say, "What are you doing?" They, I don't know yet, but I am. But this last couple of years, I've really noticed that people have been doing their homework and there's a much higher understanding, level of understanding of what it takes to, to get business that, off the ground. I, I you know, hate the startup show, but it's really nice to hear you say that. It's true. No, it's, and, I've been very impressed and, with and that. And the other thing that's going to upset me as well is, um, <laughs> do you think that's because of TV content? Yeah, I have a real bee in my bonnet about this kind of stuff. I think it's, it's a double-edged sword because it's good It's good to get people interested in, in business. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem I have is is when you look at the things... I, funnily enough, I've just written a blog about it. Did you know that? You didn't, did you? I didn't know you knew the uh, internet was, Matthew. So, <laughs> so you writing a blog. Yeah, oh, oh, I didn't know I had to put it on the internet. I've You're just hanging written. out with those constant contact people too much. <laughs> But you look at, I mean, I, I can't stand, I, I'll quite happily um, uh, admit this, I, I can't stand The Apprentice because, um, you know, it's, although it sort of makes people think about, if you look at the content of it, it's all about, you know, ideas and being an entrepreneur, but really it's about fitting into a business and filling all the stereotypes that you know, people have. So, and then you look at the <coughs> um, Dragon's Den. I mean, the one good thing I like with Dragon's Den is the fact that, you know, you have people who come to the Dragon's Den with an idea and when they get asked about, you know, the money side of it or their, their projections, a lot of them fall apart. But that is a although that's quite cringeworthy to watch actually my experience is most business owners who do are like that they they have an idea and they have a rough kind of plan but they couldn't tell you the figures and, and you, if, if you have a really good idea and a rough type of plan you forget to ask the people that are going to give you the answers you don't want like, yes you know, I've, <laughs> I've sat through several several like oh god this amazing like blogosaurus was one of them yep. you know yep. um, a whole string of uh, crap <laughs> ideas and if, if 
and I would have gone, I would have gone ahead and done a lot of them if I hadn't had a group of people around me to uh, shoot them out of the water. So you know, the money I've spent on beer might seem a lot, but it saved me <laughs> millions and my marriage, and led me to this freelancing path. But that, that's um. So do, do you think do you think people go to the startup show and they're they're more informed now as a result of mainstream content? Definitely. What what I've what I've really seen is that whereas people used to go to the startup show to get an idea of what you know what they might want to do, they're actually going there now to think what tools are there to help me get started. So most of them had to have a genuine idea of what they want to do. A lot of them actually are already up and running in that phase that we're talking about of running it alongside you'd almost call it a hobby business yeah. but then they want to but but it's not <laughs> because it's not you know selling model airplanes and things like that it's um, yeah no it's, it's a proper business but it's one that they uh, they've just got ticking over and then they're at that stage of going actually can i take it further which is really good to see and and you'll laugh but you know um the main thing I noticed on that is when you do a workshop around finance, yeah. like I do, and you've got, especially if you've got a social media event next door to you, you know, you have, I think last year, the year before last, I had about 12 people sitting in my seminar. But this year, and I don't, you know, think it's anything to do with my amazing uh, charisma Delivery. and personality, but the room was full, I had 35 people. And to just to see more people coming in to sort of try and understand the financial side of it is really encouraging, even if it's not put into practice as much as it should be. I had a similar experience at a um, tech event where I was doing social media and how to sell into corporates. There was people climbing up the walls and it was like ram packs. Yeah. Social media, <laughs> six people in my seminar. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, uh, we called it how to sell, how to sell technology over the internet because uh, your customers have mobile phones. It probably would have done better, but <laughs> it's, um, so just, just to wrap up because mm-hmm. we need to find a way to wrap up. And sure. you know, this is, this is gone on far too long. What is, what should um, people be doing? You know, what's the, what's the one, what's the, what's the thing that you go, you walk into a business and go, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing that. Um, no, well, no one's listening now, so. If yeah, just, okay, so I can just say yeah. what I want. Yeah. No, no, I think the, the main thing I would say is, don't forget, it, as much as I would want to say that the back office and the kind of financial function is, you know, the, the central part of a business, even if you even if you want to keep it as a separate thing and look at it as, you know, your evil twin of your amazing, shiny kind of front end business, don't forget that in a business there are those two sides of it. You know, it's like um, I was, my wife always says it's like our, the house is all, you know, nice and people walk past with all the lavender outside and that, but there's my missus and me, of course, hoovering and, you know, washing the floor and all that kind of thing <laughs> yeah. The, but, uh, yeah burnishing the taps <laughs> exactly but that's what a bit of business is about as well it's having it's having that really nice you know amazing kind of interesting front uh, facing customer facing side but don't forget that you need to wash the floors and the, do the hoovering and the foundations exactly yeah. and, and where can people find you on I heard you on Twitter Matt <laughs> did you now yeah. yes well it's uh, well my twitter handle is that all right that's, that's <laughs> i'm showing my well. is uh, is at matt j perkins and 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 if we i guess if we just google free agent it will come up with exactly free agent or damping <laughs> thank, thank you very much for your time today i just have to say we're recording at this in my favorite hackney wick co-working place the main yard so we'll see you soon we'll see you at the leo breakfast show excellent Round thank you no, no, okay. <laughs> Please go to berniejmitchell.com forward slash podcast. Bernie, love your feedback.